All right, Go Ohio Cast podcast tonight. Going to be talking to the co-head coach of the Dundee Vikings in Michigan, Coach Garrett Stevens. Coach Stevens, welcome to the Go Ohio Cast podcast. How are you doing tonight? Well, thank you, Doug. Thanks for having me. Well, okay, so we're talking because the Dundee Vikings are going to be going down to, what, 25 minutes down the road to Perrysburg? Yeah, 30, 35, 45 30, minutes. Okay, so right down I-75, or 23, 23, 23. 23 yep. Right down 23, you guys are going to hit Perrysburg, and we got a big live duel meet on Thursday night with the with a, a Division One school in Ohio, Perrysburg, in the Yellow yellow Jackets. Um, the Vikings are Division Four in in Michigan. Is that correct? Division Three. So you're the second smallest division in Michigan, right? Yep, 490 kids enrolled in our high school. So you have roughly 120 a class? Roughly, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to go wrestle a school with 400 kids to a class, probably. Yeah, they got as many in, in our school as they have in one grade. So. <laughs> Something I think you guys are used to, right? You guys, are, you're, you're, you're no strangers to being a, a little school who goes and up against the big dogs, right? Right. Uh, two weeks ago, we went to Crown Point. I had heard that they have like 10,000 kids in the high school. Wait, I don't what? Know if that's true or not. Wait, what? Crown Point has 10,000 kids? That's what I had heard when we were there. Are you serious? I don't know if it's true, but that's what I heard. How did that go for you guys? How'd you do with Crown Point? Uh, not bad. You know, um, didn't have a full lineup, uh, but we had a couple kids shine. Um, it's just part of the process. But still, it was, it was only the second meet of the year. So still learning where we got to get good and areas we got to fix. But overall, I was happy with uh, competing. It was really good competition. Got to see, like, Fisher McCourt out of Pennsylvania. There was a team out of Tennessee, um, Cleveland. They were pretty impressive, solid top to bottom. Then obviously, like, Crown Point. Lowell was there and several other schools. <clears throat> How did you guys finish there? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> was it duels or was it a tournament? It was individual. It was 16 uh like team, 17 teams or something like that invited. And uh yeah, it was individual scoring. Okay, so that okay, here's what I don't understand. Michigan does not score their individual state tournament. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so here I'm just gonna give you here's my jump to logic. Are you ready? Yep. Where do you want all your guys to go? You want them to go Division One NCA, Division Two NCA, Division Three NCA, NAIA or JUCO? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what all five of those levels do at their end of the season tournament? Do you know what they do in their individual tournament? I'm guessing they crown a champ based on the individual scoring. Correct. I'm just here's this my only. This is literally the only. You guys got rid of your horrendously bad rule with you can't wrestle someone who doesn't touch your state within a certain mileage you got rid of that right partially we can only travel to a neighboring state but anybody else can come in or they can come in okay so what happened there was okay so just to give people relevance to it why it matters right now <clears throat> you guys just went to Braxville. Yep. in the past canyon view arizona would not been able to be at the tournament with you guys being there, correct? Correct. There was also like Summit, Tennessee. I think like Fort Labou, uh, uh, Pennsylvania was there. And, and uh, yeah, so that, that couldn't have happened in the past. And I know, you know in the past, Brexels had to limit the field just to have the Michigan guys. And I want to say Indiana had a rule like that too, not too long ago, but it got changed as well. So you guys going to Crown Point when it would not have been able to happen with McCourt being there, right? Correct. Um, oh. And that was like one of the things your coach had reached out to us once the rule changed. He was like, originally Michigan teams, I think Lowell went last year, and I think Michigan teams were going to be out because they were trying to expand. And then we changed the rule, and then he reached out to us directly. Now, you still can't be at a tournament with a prep school, right? Correct. So, so I know that we can do like Iron Man. Or yeah. So my nephew's the head coach at. Um, uh, Western Reserve, who's actually going to be at the pit this week. And I don't think that's – you guys can't go to the pit because Western Reserve is at the pit. Is that where Dave Hedda was? 
Yes, that's correct. Now Ian Miller is the coach there. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's that's the jump there, right? So that kind of is weird because they've been there. And then what will happen is if they take a year off, that will bring you guys and all the, all the Michigan teams hopefully are able to enter into the pit because I love going to the tournament. It's a local tournament um, <clears throat> for my family. My nephews wrestle there. So I, I like going to it. There is a small like loophole in the prep thing too from what I understand. Um, so like Western Reserve does not compete at the Ohio State tournament, right? Correct. Because they're not a part of the OHSAA? Correct. That's correct. Okay. If they were, we could. Gotcha. So I believe like Lake Highland Prep is, is a part of their Florida High School Athletic Association. So I believe they're coming up to wrestle with us in DCC uh, towards the end of the month. Really? I, see, I, uh, yeah. There's so many nuances and ins and outs and turn your hat sideways jump on one <laughs> foot yeah <laughs> read the rule book 20 times yes yeah yeah, or, yeah. Uh, any input you can get on it you know okay so you guys how did you finish at uh braxville you guys were just at braxville you go from crown point to braxville i love how you don't hide from anyone <laughs> but you go from crown point you got a better gauge of how you finished because it's more recent how did you guys finish at braxville how many placers for dundee uh, I believe we had nine, um, eight or nine. Uh, we took seventh as a team. So it's kind of to chalk, I think, with the national rankings and the teams over there or whatever. But we had one champ, and uh, yeah, you know, we got to double enter this year in a couple of weeks. So we had two placers at 13, which in a, any other year we haven't been able to double enter. So it's kind of nice to get a couple extra kids some extra competition. So you double placed at 13. Yep. Did either one of your guys wrestle Gray Burnett? Because that's the dual meet coming up, right? No, they did not. They didn't run into Gray Burnett. Okay. So, and obviously that's a big one for you guys because you're going to have to match up with them. You know, you have substantially less kids in the school and your lineup, you're not going to have as many guys to choose from as they are in theory, right? Right. So who was your champ? Lake Cosby at 144. So, okay. Here's the other thing. You guys don't wrestle those weight classes, do you? And um, we do. We switched last year. You did switch. Okay. So one forty four. Cosby won it. Yep. Who who will he have to wrestle from Perrysburg? Did they match up at Brexville? No, they didn't. I think they have like Alex Cole there. So they we, we didn't see him. Actually, Perrysburg kids. I think we had a couple matchups. The one hundred six. Um, not Dodd, but Takats wrestled uh, Cocker at 106 twice, once in the front side of the bracket and once in the back side of the bracket. And then uh, at 150 for the fifth place match, Chavez wrestled Parker. How'd that go? I think Parker 151. We got okay. eight down, I think two takedowns late. So you guys have the win and have, you know, there's an advantage at 150. How was that at 106, that double matchup at 106? Was it Tackett's, I think? It was Tackett's for them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mason Kotcher, um beat him by decision both times. But that's – Dodd won the bracket and he to wrestle Dodd. Yeah, because they had a double placer at six, right? Because that... yep. Wow. So, up and, and down lost... the lineup, we're going to have some really good matchups. What... <laughs> yeah, we lost in the semis to uh, Smith from Lowell. So, and then he wrestled Dodd three to one in the finals. Gotcha. Where do you think are your best matchups up and down the lineup with Perrysburg? Where do you guys, where are you strongest? Obviously, you know, 144 is probably where you're strongest, right? It's probably your best guy. If he's winning the Braxville, he's pretty good, right? Yeah. Where Where do you well, uh, foresee good matchups, great matchups? I, I think the whole duel, I mean, there's there's a lot of really good matchups throughout the duel. There's a lot of interesting, like, um, traits that both kids have that wrestle each other, right? So we get... We got kids that are very familiar with Gray Burnett. Um, they've been down to BTW quite a bit. Most of our kids actually know most of the kids. So when we were like cutting weight for uh, the way out of Brexville, they were kind of hanging out, goofing around with each other. Um, I would say probably from 106 to 175, there, there's a lot of swing matches in there. There's a couple matches that are probably heavier favorites than we are. Uh, you know, you got a Marcus Blaze or a Gray Burnett, they're, they're hard to match. We'll do what we can. I know Cole Evans didn't make way um, at Brexville. So that's it's one to watch at 26 with uh, Kate Clues. We have a 
multi-time state champ there. So we could see Ohio State champ versus Michigan State champ at 126 if they do have Evans at 126, correct? Yep. And they got a lot of flexibility in there. They got, depending, like, Dodds is good at six. Dodds at six. They put Dodd up with Burnett at 13, and they bumped them around. Dankins just took third there at 20. So they, they got options to slide around, and we're kind of in the same boat. We got multiple kids at the same weights that they do. So I, I don't think Scotty's one to slide his lineup a ton, but um, they have options if they want to. When we hit 175, we go up to 190. What do you guys foresee and what do you have at 90, 215 and heavyweight? Do you, or is that something where you guys have big fall off or are you strong there? We got a lot of youth there. Still, still um, a lot of development at that weight. Um, most of them only been wrestling a couple of years. So it'll be a tougher matchup for us. Um, they're like the biggest kids we have in our school. <laughs> like we got the kids that we have in our school out. Um, we just don't have that much depth at heavyweight. You know? I love it. Where else do you guys go in your schedule for Dundee um, as far as out of state, in state? What is your toughest competitions left? And you guys finish up about a month earlier than Ohio. Ohio's got some moronic system where we think we need to make the the postseason a month longer than it needs to be. You guys have an individual state and you have a dual state. I know that, right? And they kind of coincide with one another, don't they? Yeah, so you, you do Wednesday dual, uh, Saturday individual. So the week of district, you have district dual, district individual on Saturday. And the following week is a regional dual on Wednesday, regional individual on Saturday. And then you have the team tournament on a Friday, Saturday, the following week, and then individual, it's like two weeks off from regional. <laughs> Although we have the worst individual setup ever now. Really? The, the day before. Wait a minute. You have essentially have a way out to weigh in, is what you're telling me. Yes. We weigh in on a Thursday night at a high school in Detroit, and then wrestle Saturday, or Friday and Saturday. Hold on, is it just one way in? It's just one way in. <laughs> Dude, are you <laughs> kidding me right now? No, 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 I'm not making it up. I can't make it up. I've never even heard of what you just said. Is this like a yeah. bitty? Is it like the tournament of champions? <laughs> Can you call in your way? Hey, we're going to just call the way in. Can you do that? No, not quite that. But, yeah, it started like two years ago. They like We got an email, I want to say, like five days out that they were going to do it. And then last year they did it again. And then, yeah, they did. Hold on. One more time. MHSAA, Michigan High School State Athletic Association. I think that's what it means, right? Yep. You're telling me you are you have divisions one through four individual championships, right? That you, and girls. And girls, you, we got five divisions in one building. Oh, okay. And you don't keep score at the individual tournament for who's the best team. Okay, we got that too. On yep. top of that, you have a Friday night weigh-in or Thursday, Thursday night weigh-in for a Friday-Saturday tournament. There's no weigh-in between Friday and Saturday's wrestling. Am I hearing that right? You are hearing that correctly. <laughs> so you have dudes who are massive for the state final. Oh, yeah. Massive. Now, 30 now pounds, 40 pounds bigger. I was going to say they have been taking data the last couple of years that they've done it. Um, like they'll have the they'll, they'll pull kids from the semis and like have them step on a scale and they're like tracking it. So I haven't seen the data behind it, but yeah. I mean. Who cares about the data? We know they're massive. <laughs> you and I know they're massive, right? Yeah. That wow. I love learning. I love that. That is amazing. And we're like one of the only states that does um, home weigh-ins too. Wait, what? So we'll weigh in the day before a tournament. You guys, that's like how the NCA got to where they were, to where now they have all this like hydration test. They got they got to that because guys were getting so massive and cutting so much weight. Literally, the system you have implemented that I'm not even making that up. Like I, I'm, I'm steadfast in my belief that I am actually correct. That you guys are going with the system that got the NCA to where they are right now. Really. Yeah, a day in, they were day before weigh-ins. That's correct. I had no idea. Yes, the reason that guys were dying, and they would give them all their weight. So what they did is they would give them the weight at the beginning, and they would take the weight away at the NCI. So it used to be 197 to start the season, and then at the end of the season, you had to make 190. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they would take weight away. So what they did was a guy from Michigan died, a guy from Campbell died, 
I remember that. It was during like the sauna thing. Like 98, awesome. 1998, 97, 98. Yep. These guys died and then they like went to this drastic specific gravity of urine, um, hydration test. Um, you had uh, the, the, the weight loss plan, which I believe you guys follow, right? You do hydration and then the yeah, weight loss yeah, plan, we, right? We you skin fold assessment. Yep, all that. <clears throat> um, and then, wow. And then they would give you weight at the beginning and then you take it away. And now they have give growth allowance. So they used to do the opposite in the NCA. That's so their, their, their fix to all of it was just give them the seven pounds, keep the seven pounds. So because 118 used to be, 125 used to be 118. Okay. The old weights were 118, 126. All you do is everything I'm saying right now is add seven pounds to it. Yep. And it's literally, except for heavyweight, it used to be a 275, not a 285. Um, but yeah, 190 used to be 190. 197 used to be 190. Um, 65 was 58. 57. I, say, I watched some of the old old matches, like old finals matches, and I remember seeing like 118 and all that. So. Yeah, so they just added seven pounds to every weight. And that's why you have what you have now. Um, your 177s are 184 now. So Kevin Randleman would have been a 184 now. Um, Kale Sanderson would have actually have been right on the edge. I believe he would have wrestled the old weights one year and then the new weights the next year. Oh, really? 97, I believe they would have wrestled. 97, 98 would have wrestled the, uh, <clears throat> the, the old weights their freshman year, and then they changed them to the new weights. So I will say for our individual tournament, it used to be a three-day event, and you would weigh in on day one and day two, and that was when it was at the Palace. And then when they demoed the Palace, we moved over to the fourth field, and then we had like one year of the – one or two years where we actually weighed in there at fourth field, and there was a lot of headaches with everything, and then they moved over to doing it in the high school. So I don't know if there was other plays, other reasons why they went to that or what. So you guys – used to be two weigh-ins. So you went from two weigh-ins – and you, you had a change of venue. You went from north and uh, like Pontiac, essentially, right? With yep. the, uh, Auburn Hills, whatever, uh, next to the garbage dump. Yep. Um, which is where the 2007 NCAA tournament was. It w was actually at the Palace of Auburn Hills where the uh, Pistons used to play, right? Correct. Bad boys. My bad boys. I was a bad, bad boy. Bad boy, and then Pontiac is also north, and that's where the Silver Dome used to be. And now they took all that infrastructure for the pro sports franchises and put it downtown. Yep. And then Joe Lewis is still there, but Joe, they play at Little Caesars now, right? The Red Wings? Yeah, the Pistons and the Red Wings both play. All right, little, hey, hey, best arena on the planet Earth, Little Caesars. Is it? Best arena on the planet, not up for debate. Best so, arena, as far as there's bars and restaurants. I mean, parking sucks everywhere. Let's just get that out of the way, right? Parking, I mean, it's Detroit, right? It's Detroit. It's whatever. Name a major city where the parking's great, right? Um, <clears throat> but as far as the arena experience, the concourse, the floor, the concourse, the, the the floor level, um, tunnels, the fan experience, I would say that Little Caesars is the best arena I've been in. So I may just say, hey, look at going there. It's just so much more expensive. It's We're massive. Hundred fifty thousand dollars a day or something crazy. Yeah, it's massive too. Um, I get Ford Field's obviously bigger, being a football arena, but I think Ford Field's just so easy, and it's probably more accessible and a lot cheaper. Well, then they we want to keep all divisions together, and there's no other venue in the state that can do it that's available. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. That makes sense. I get it. Um. Ohio has theirs at the uh, – <clears throat> they're obsessed with having it on the campus of Ohio State for some reason because people are just obsessed with Ohio State. Where you guys got a different setup in Michigan, whereas you have two flagship schools, right? You have – obviously, you either, people are either Sparty or they're Wolverines, right? They're either Michigan State or they're Michigan. Ohio doesn't have that. Ohio just has Ohio State, right? Like, there's not like a big Toledo, Ohio State, Kent State, Ohio State, Cleveland, whatever. Name one of the small, you know, name one of the Cincinnati. I don't know. We don't have that. We just don't have that. Whereas like Sparty and Wolverines, they're pretty comparable in a lot of things because first off, Michigan State's way bigger than Michigan is, right? As far as student body enrollment. And then um, the fan bases are both pretty similar, right? Um, 
I think nationwide, obviously Michigan has a bigger fan base, but in the state of Michigan, it's split down the middle, right? Yeah, I would say. I would say like the the older generation is probably more Michigan, the younger generation is more MSU. I think it probably has a lot to do with like what programs were having success at one time. I think there's more Michigan fans coming back up through. There's a lot of yeah. bandwagon people. Wow, that's crazy to me that you guys do a one day weigh in and then you're having it. Um, I kept seeing pictures of the mats move. Oh man, last year was so bad. Yeah, so the mats move on the field turf. So they redid the turf the week before we got there. So they had no idea. And the turf that they brought in is is longer turf. It's supposed to be more um, safe for the athletes to play football on. And the problem is you got those light flex. It's not the old resin light heavy mats. You got those light flex mats. So they sit on the turf and with all that airflow, they just shift. They're floating. No you- yeah, they float. And then you're you're on extra long turfs. So like when they were stacking, you could see it squish. Yeah, every staff was squishing. And then like they had like four inch tape, five inch tape, six inch tape. Then they started overlapping the tape because all of it was shifting and sliding and falling apart. And and it was nothing anybody could do. Like nobody saw it coming. And it was like the day of, it was like, oh my God, we didn't even be able to have a tournament. You know? And without having some sort of subfloor with that kind of turf, we those those matches won't stay put. Yeah, they're going to continue to float, and then the turf can give way and it can damage the turf on top of that, right? Yep. Yep. It was. It was. It was a. It was a mess, but you know, you got to give everybody credit. A lot of people put in a lot of work just to try to get it done. And kids, for what it was, like didn't let that be a factor because it was weird. I mean, I was walking across and I was like, I, I, I would break. <laughs> it, it would get in my head, but now they handled it well. Okay, talk to me, Coach Stevens, about how you manage the dual state championships that coincides uh, with your regional wrestling championships to your state wrestling individual championships. How do you manage the two? Because it's two separate events, right? Two separate yeah. venues, two separate events, separate matches. These matches don't count towards those ma- You know, They don't advance you on in the regional or the state, right? Yep. And you can have a guy who has uh, a, the state championship individual match first round of the dual championships, right? They could have that individual match in that duel, right? How do you manage that? Um, well, we're fortunate, like, we have a weird draw for, like, our district region. So our team route, we go through a lot of programs that don't have a lot of kids. And we don't see – so it, it is weird, too, because – the teams we run into at districts and regionals, we usually see them at the individual platforms as well. But then we kind of go like northern Detroit area. So we see schools that we don't see. So like our individual regional is actually like probably one of the top of regionals in Division Three. Um, but we don't see the teams that are there at our team regional draw, if that makes sense. So like okay. our individual district is compiled of all the teams that are in our region per team. Okay. Because uh, you got 16 teams so, in your district, and then you draw into another region with another 16 teams, and the best kids come into that region. You have four regions. But for, like, team, you have eight teams that qualify for state. And then you guys are in a situation where you can see an up north team, right? And there's, yeah. no, you know, nothing about an up north team because the up north team isn't really going to go and travel anywhere so, yeah. points to you, right? Yeah, and and we we see like one or two of them, like Hudson Super Sixteen. We might see like like the Kingsley has qualified in and out before, and we might see a couple of their kids come down. But for the most part, it's uh, you're kind of just going over like uh, regional uh, results, going through track, and then trying to like look up season summaries of kids. And then, uh, yeah, when the draw comes out for state, you're just kind of looking at the path, who the teams you have, what their lineups and who they wrestled all year. And then, like, I'll go through and try to look for similar opponents that I've even seen, like, on the high school scene or maybe in the summer scene or whatever, just to kind of get a gauge of who they are. Um, we have Michigan Grappler here, too. They do a pretty good job of, like, ranking kids and doing Michigan, like, high school wrestling coverage. So, um, with today's technology, you can kind of have a good idea of what a lineup is and, who's wide and try to get the right matchups and then uh yeah it's it's interesting every year you see that 
team state a uh, week before the individual state you see these upsets where people you know ship their line up on kids all over to try to win duels and then uh you know a week later you got to turn around and wrestle individuals when you do the championship match right when you have you have four divisions right yep are the four championship duels directly next to each other or are they different sessions how does that work they're all next to each other they're at uh, Wayne's Event Center in Kalamazoo. So they, they take out the glass at the hot green, and then they build a platform, and all four divisions wrestle on the platform. So it usually goes from one end, it goes division one, and then division two, division three, division four. So we're seeing like between division two and three, and then division one's on the far end. And then uh, they also seed, so like uh, the, the team tournament gets seeded. And then whoever the highest seed is um, gets seated on the one side. So, like, the last couple of years, it's kind of went to chalk with, with the teams um, outside of Division One, like Davis and, and DCC have had some duels. But uh, so, like, the last couple of years has been, like, Hudson in Division Four, and then us, and then Lowell in Division Two. And we've all been seated, like, right next to each other because we, we stay on the same side the whole weekend. Gotcha. And then the, the, the top two teams in Division One. D- Detroit Catholic Central, um, Davidson, help me out. Heartland now. What was the other one? Heartland. Heartland, Heartland. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Uh, those have been the big three. Brighton's okay. been in there before. You, I mean, you have Oxford, um, Bedford. And there's been several teams that popped in. Holt had a good run for a while. Okay. Uh, Rockford Rams, they were good for a while. I think that was when I was in school. Okay. And then D2, who are your top D2? Is it Lowell? Lowell's been a runaway, but you've had uh, Goodrich is solid. Uh, Gaylord's had some runs that have been there as well. Um, it, it, it's kind of a – it depends on who gets seated where. And then, like, now you're starting to see a lot more teams are starting to compete in season and duels a lot more because they're trying to get away from the one seed. So you want to get a two or three. So you got to try to get as many quality wins – and then the seating committee looks at like all the teams that have qualified um, for the state tournament divisions one through four, and those count as like quality wins. So you're trying to seek out that competition to try to get as many wins as possible to get a higher seed. Jeez, do you guys even worry about that though? Like I'm guessing you don't even care about what your seed's going to be, do you? Oh, uh, once upon a time, yeah. Um, now it kind of just settles itself. We don't wrestle very many duels anymore. That's crazy to me. Because your state champion in the state of Michigan is crowned because of dual meets. Yeah. Has it but, gotten to the point where we just want to be as good and help these kids get as good as they can be and dual results will take care of themselves? It's, it's kind of what it's gotten to. I mean, the thing I have, I have a problem wrestling a bunch of duels. So you wrestle 35 duels in a year and you got a kid that's really good. You got an ace in the hole, right? You got a, like, like Perry Bird got a Marcus Blitz, right? If he wrestles a bunch of duels, how many teams are going to avoid that kid? All of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then how many times does he get to be in a big match? And then let's say he does run into somebody that's very good. And he hasn't had much match time. And then, you know, I mean, he's a little bit different because he does all the other stuff. But you have a kid like that that's wrestled 30 matches but has been voided to 28 times. How, how, how does that kid handle when he does have to go into deep water, you know? Yeah. So, so we, we, we go to the best tournaments that we can to find as light competition as possible to give these kids as many tough matches as possible. So that way when they're in those tough matches, it's just another day. So right now you guys got two really good guys, three really good guys starting on teams in the big 10 or big 12. You know, you got the juggernaut, obviously Casey Swiderski, one of the top guys at 149. You got Braden Davis wrestling at 25 for Penn state, Stony Buell at Purdue, right? I know I'm miss. I know I'm missing some guys. You, you yep. can, you can, you can bust my chops. That's fine. But those three, and they're all three different classes, right? They're different grades, right? Those guys aren't all from one grade, are they? Yeah. And they're all this. They're all Dundee guys, no. right? Yeah. All three Dundee guys. All three they, different they grades. Back to back to back. Yeah. So you get my point, right? Like you guys are turning over a really good product, and you're sending guys to the Big Ten consistently. Obviously, Big 12, um, you got guys that are in the MAC. Uh, was it uh, Tyler Swiderski's at Central, right? 
Central cousin, Caden Chinovars at Central. Yeah, he had I mean, good ones earlier this year too. Yeah, you guys got a bunch of good guys. You know, the guys I didn't name, right? I didn't name the top guy every year in the program. Um, so you're you're doing the right things, obviously, with your schedule. Um, <clears throat> going into a dual meet like this, right? Like you guys said, you're, you're just not wrestling any dual meets. Why take Perrysburg on in a dual meet then? Why not? <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it'd be nice to get a few more duels in and you get a quality team like Perrysburg in and they're solid top to bottom. They're well coached. Their, their kids are stingy. Um, I think we wrestle similar in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, get to your tie, hand fight, get to your offense, you gotta get away, get them get away on bottom, and then like if you get a takedown, finishing on top, getting a ride out. Like a lot of things that I know Scotty preaches, we do the same. And if you get an opportunity to wrestle a team like them, it's it's just a great opportunity. You um became the co head coach. Right. You guys are co-head coaches. Um, <clears throat> you look at obviously being a, a co-head coach between you and Nate, Nate, Nate Garrett, head co-head coaches from Tim, coach Tim Roberts, right? Coach no. Tim Roberts. No one decides to, ah, I'll be the head. I'll be that. Nobody you guys go with co-head coaches, right? What do you yep. think you learned from coach Roberts and how do you balance the co-head coach thing? Uh, Tim never had an ego about the sport. Uh, he always just wanted to get better. He never, um, he would always just seek out people, ask questions. Um, if, if we were failing in a certain area, he took it upon himself to find a guy that's good in that area, coach our kids up, learn from that guy. And, uh, you know, Nate and I working alongside him for a long time, we were very much the same way. Just there's, there's so many great minds in the sport and, uh, you're never going to have all the answers. And we're fortunate that with everything that he did, we knew we had to find balance and we were, we were good to check each other. And um, I don't think either one of us is, is, you know, bigger than the other. We don't, we're just here to try to get these kids as good as we can. and Hopefully have, you know, college paid for and successful careers. And maybe, maybe, you know, they don't do that, but they learn life lessons to become good people down the road. And, um, you can learn a lot through wrestling. And I think we carry that same mindset. And that's something like Tim always talked about. And, uh, yeah, it just seemed like a good fit. And when Tim was uh, in the process of retiring, he kind of pulled us aside. I was like, you know, I might be done at the end of this year. What would your guys' plan be? Who would want to take over? And I was, me and I just kind of looked at each other and I was like, we'll, we'll split it. <laughs> it was like, it was like we both thought the same thing, right? So. And then we were fortunate we got with the school administration, talked to them about it. And they had some further questions because it's, I don't think it's unusual in the sport of wrestling, but it's unusual in a lot of sports, especially like football and stuff. You always have a head coach, right? You always have the guy that has to have the answer. But if Nate or I don't have an answer or we can't come to a conclusion, then we're calling somebody else, right? Like it, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's so many knowledgeable people and there's so many people around you. Like I'll, I'll still reach out to them with that <laughs> Okay, so in the MHSAA state championship program, you guys were champs last year in the duels, right? Yep. Um, how many years in a row have you won the the six, duels? Six in Division Three, and uh, we got second on a tie in twenty seventeen, and we won in six. So. Yeah. So all those say Tim Roberts last year's would say Nate Hall, Garrett Stevens. Co- co- does it say that? Yep, co coach. That's awesome, dude. I love it. I think that's like, I, I love it because, uh, you know, some of them will be like, ah, we can only put one of you or what, we don't do that. Or, you know, it costs too much to print and put two names in there. You know, they do weird and say stupid things, right? Um, I love that. I love that you guys feel uh, how you feel about it and how you're like, hey, we just want to do what's best for our kids. You got Coach Roberts' blessing. I had that guy on a podcast. What a good dude, man. What a freaking good dude. I like him. He's a good cat. He's awesome, man. He he went through he went through trial and error with our program. Like he was there as an assistant when we won four in a row in division four. Then he came back and had trouble winning it. And we took one and then we went to division three. And then we couldn't win one. And we were one match away like five years in a row. And we finally snuck one through in 07. And then we got beat in the final several times after that. And then uh 2013 we started getting the ball rolling. And then uh, we kept getting better and implemented, you know, lifting and 
Uh, we had uh, Dave Boyer ran uh, Advantage out of our high school. So we learned quite a bit out of him. And we implemented some of his stuff. And then before you know it, you know, we're competing on bigger stages. And those, as we're going through that, the Bradens and, and uh, Stonies and Casey's and them, they were, they were younger. So then they started doing it at a younger age and then they started having success later. You know, it, was, it was a really cool process. But dude, yeah, it's it's kind of awesome to have, to have seen it. I remember you guys dueled Oak Harbor because I'm from Oak Harbor. <clears throat> you dueled Oak Harbor uh, one year at like St. John's and it came down to you ended up beating it by like two points. And it was one of their better teams they've ever had. My nephew Ian was on the team and um, I was like, man, they're good. He might have wrestled. Does Braden Davis had an older brother? No. He wrestled somebody, I want to say, that was a, a state champ. Um, like a 130, 135 state champ wrestled Ian one year. Now, what was this like 2010, 2011? Yeah, nine or 10. Yeah, probably 2010. All right. Yeah. I mean, we had uh, Joey Rendina, Joey White, Chris Rao. It was White. That's what it was. That sounds right. It was, it was White. Yeah, like 125, 119, somewhere in there. Yeah, something about that. Yeah, that sounds right. But he did not wrestle uh, either Rendina brother. Okay. They were a little bigger. So, but yeah, that, that team, that 2011 team we had was really good. And they got upset in the semis. Oh, really? Yeah. I think we had like, by the end of it, there was like 12 state champs on that team, I think, or something crazy like that. I mean, obviously not all in that year, but we had four that year. Wow. How many did you have individually last year? State champs. Seven. <laughs> you had that you had half the champs last year? Yeah. <laughs> What's the record? A couple times now. What's the record? Uh I think seven. We might have had eight one year. I think it was seven. Wow. I think Graham's done seven, and I think St. Paris Graham has done seven in Ohio. But they Taylor's did individual one. I think and then like, yeah. So there's been some good runs. Um, I think Davis was close one year. I think they had six. Yeah, Genoa. You know Genoa. Yep. Genoa had six. Uh, I want to say D'Amelio's senior year, they had six six in a row. Or six out of uh six out of eight weight classes. That's what it was. That's it was crazy. yeah, and it was like uh, and they beat a Matten. They had to beat a Matten brother. They had to beat like a lot of really good dudes who are all D1 guys now. And they did it, man. <laughs> it was pretty impressive. And that, and that's the scoring record in Ohio. I know you guys don't keep a team score an individual. I didn't mean to bring it up, but that's the, that, that six champs. So, okay. So let's say if you were to do a team scoring version of it, I'm guessing you're not just having seven champs. I'm guessing you're having seven champs, five placers, right? We all fourteen kids we sent place last year. So we're talking seven champs, seven placers. Yeah, one was a runner up. Uh, I think we had two thirds on the backside, and the lowest placer we had was fifth. You don't get to double double up with a person in a weight, do you? We do. Oh, you do. You get to do like what Brexville did for you. Yep. So at one hundred six, we went one and two. Oh wow! <laughs> and then our third trainer actually didn't get to go because he can't triple enter, but he would have. He probably would have won one, two, three. So he did your two, season one runner up? Did your two one oh sixes were they both placers at Brexville this year? No, because our third trainer actually placed at Brexville at thirteen, and then um, he he won the rest off. So the kid that was a runner up last year went up to one twenty and lost in the blood round. Wow, he's in the blood round. Mm-hmm. So that 120 is going to be a good match with Dankins. You lost to Dankins in the blood run. What was that score? 5-1. So we're going to see that. You already know that that can be flipped. You and I know a 5-1 match in a week can be flipped, right? The goal. <laughs> in a, um, you get my point, right? Like you can yeah. flip that result. Yep. And, and who knows? There might be a better kid that's a better matchup too. Wow, you got me excited about this duel. I, like, I'm like real excited now when I get the ins and outs of it. Um, who are your other places top to bottom though? Give me the other placers. So Mason Gotcher, 106, took fourth. Uh 113, we had Aiden Nutt took sixth. Brian Sterling took seventh. Uh 120. We had Wyatt Burns took sixth. 
126, Kate Clouse took third. 132, Cam Shinovar took fourth. Uh, 144, Blake Cosby won it. 150, Trey took fifth. Uh, we had a blood rounder at 57. And then 65, Cole Kotcher took sixth. I'm excited for this duel. <laughs> Because every but every weight you just said, they're usually similarly solid with a placer blood round type guy at Brexville. Yeah. Of those guys who placed, how many of them are returning state champions? So of the guys who placed at Brexville, how many are returning state champs or state finalists or placers? Uh 13 is returning champ. Uh 26 was a returning champ. 32 was a returning champ. 44 was a runner-up, and 65 was a returning champ. So five, five finalists. Four Wait teams. a minute. Your guy who won Braxville didn't win the Michigan State Championship? No, he took second. Who beat him? Uh, senior from Williamston at 144. So so Blake was a 32-pounder last year. Wow. But he was behind Cam Chinovar, Caden Chinovar, and Braden Davis. So they were all 26-pounders, essentially. And Braden went to 32, and Caden Shinovar, who wrestles 125 in Central, was up to 138. And then Blake had to go for 144. So he just got in where he could get in. Yeah. And took second in the state. Yep. And then won one of the toughest, the oldest holiday tournament in America. Yeah, and he won at Crown Point the week before, too. <laughs> he's a he's a killer. He Yeah, he had a really good tournament. He beat... Uh, Get from Bishop McCork was still good, and then he beat uh Brogan Tucker. Wait a minute, he beat Brogan Tucker and Melvin Miller. No, Melvin Miller was up. He beat Sam Herring. He beat Sam Herring and Brogan Tucker. Yeah, he beat Herring in the semis and then Tucker in the final. Wow, dude, this guy is ready. Is he committed yet? Sophomore. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. Sophomores commit, you know that, right? Yeah, I mean. Hey, he's just now probably getting on the radar. I mean, last year, us some 44 as a freshman, like he didn't, he didn't do a ton. Um, he did Fargo All American this past year to that. And then, uh, yeah, he, he's been on a good run. He took third at Grappler Fall Classic, or second, second Grappler Fall Classic. Who beat him there? I'm not sure what the kid's name was, to be honest. Jeez, a pizza. The guy, I love it. You guys chase down. I love how you like go like we need to go where the best teams are. I love how you don't you just don't you want all the smoke. Yeah, no, and that's like the expectation really isn't a we're gonna go down to Perrysburg. I, I don't expect to win. I just hope we're in a lot of really good matches and, and our kids compete through the whole match. You know, like we went to work today on things that we could do better from the weekend. And we applied it today. We'll apply it tomorrow, and then hopefully they apply it in the match. Because the whole goal is just to have growth until March, right? Like it's the same thing. We go down to Braxville. Like we're not going down there to win or place down three or whatever. We don't even talk about. It. We're just going there to compete one match at a time and figure out where we can get better. Well, you got me fired up. I, I think you guys are definitely um, in the conversation to win the dual meet. There's no question. I, I listen. I'm expecting like a seven, seven split coming down to who didn't get pinned, who got a tech ball, who got a hustle takedown, who won an overtime. That's what I'm like. I'm, ex I'm really excited for this duel. And when I heard about it and then I was like, Hey, is anybody doing anything with it? And they're like, nobody. I'm like, well, let's, let's live broadcast it on go high. What are you talking about? Oh, you're going to live broadcast it. Yeah. Are you joking? What? That's sweet. I mean, I love talking to you and all, but we're here to promote the live duel we're going to do. I thought it was just a pretty face, hey, man. Hey, we're going to have it on Ohio. I know the kids can't read cursive, but we're going to have it on Ohio. No, they can't read it or write it. <laughs> they cannot. They can't, but they're going to, this is where it's going to be. Ohio Cash Wrestling YouTube live free. Free. Um, You're commenting? Of course. Of course. Right. They're going to do commentary. Are you joking? So, yeah, we're going to do that. Only thing I don't, because I'm just a one-man deal, right? I don't do any graphics. Yeah, don't have to. Don't have to. We, I'm, I'm excited. Well, hey, I got Scotty and Coach Whitner coming up here next at 9, Coach Stevens. Do you have anything else for me? No, no. I just I appreciate you having us on. And, uh, yeah, we just look forward to the duel.
getting good, good matches in and we're uh, we're fortunate for to reach out to us and we're, we're you know happy that they're willing to host us we uh you know we didn't get many duels this year and once they reached out we were like yeah we'll do it like seems like a no-brainer they're just on the road and we've never done it before so. but do you guys you have know, a date not... a date amount of dates that you can wrestle yeah, we we have um it was fourteen with A B in tournaments. This year they allow sixteen. Um eight of them are tournaments, but the two that they added are singular duel. So this falls into that. Gotcha. So you had to you had to pick up two single duels. Yep. But you wrestle a bunch of duels. What what will you end up wrestling? Like tell me a record. What's the record like at the end of the year? Are you guys sixteen and oh? Are you fifteen oh. and one? What are you? We're like I don't know, like uh, seventeen and five or something. Because <laughs> you don't, because you don't hide. Well, I mean, we're gonna wrestle. We we have a stretch coming up. We have Perrysburg, Detroit Catholic Central, Lowell, Lake Highland Prep, Heartland. We're gonna wrestle St. Ed's, and. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you like the super quad with Lake Highland Prep, Blair, and like? Are no, you no, no. Uh, Lake Highland coming up to Detroit Catholic Central. So we'll duel them there. And then we do and the that's deep, the... deeper duels where like St. Ed's comes off. And in your gotcha. past, we've had like Montini and I think like Mount Carmel and all that. Dude. Oh, God, dude. Uh, Rexel <laughs> used to come off and do it. I love it. I it's, love how you guys just don't hide. It's like it's competition. No, it's funny. Like I said, like at the end of the year when they do the seating meeting, it's like we're like 15 and five or something. <laughs> and, then, and then the next team's like 38 and all. <laughs> yeah, you'll have some a 44 and 0. And yeah. they didn't they haven't wrestled somebody who can fight their way to way out of a wet paper sack. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, a bunch of them are shout outs, right? Yeah. I love it. Uh, all we right. Don't, we don't do many of those. Six o'clock Thursday night at Perrysburg. At the hive, right? At the, the hive. Well, at the hive, all right. Whatever they want to call it. Yeah, the hive. <laughs> Well, technically, it's at the high school, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Dundee Vikings. I got that right. Correct. Dundee Vikings, Perrysburg Yellow Jackets, a small school out of Michigan, taking on a big school out of Ohio. Should be a great duel. Top 50 matchup, right? What do you guys rank currently? 43rd. 43rd. What are they, 27th or 23rd? Somewhere, yeah. It shifted in the last week, but yeah, they're top 29. I like that. Listen, I like that the 43rd can knock off the 20-something. I like that. That's the goal. Right. It's going to be great. Coach Stevens, thank you for the time. I'll uh, make sure we get this at you. I appreciate you, and I will see you Thursday uh, evening. Perfect. Thank you, Zed. See you thank Thursday. you, sir.